Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name's Christina and on my channel we talk all things beauty from my own experiences. So if you guys are looking for the best and most honest how-tos and reviews from a consumer's perspective, then make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave any comments that you have for me down below. So I'm very excited for this video, mainly because this has been my new go-to fake lash routine, if you will. So I have been testing out a bunch of different products, a bunch of different brands, and I finally feel comfortable enough to share with you guys how I like to apply my lash clusters or lash ribbons. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the lash ribbons that I use, how I apply them, give you a little bit of background on different kinds that I've tried in the past, and just do a little demo, and hopefully you guys can get a little bit more more of an understanding on what exactly lash clusters are, why people opt to use them, and so on and so forth. So if you guys are interested in any of that stuff, then just keep on watching. All right, so first off, what are lash ribbons or lash clusters? So essentially, lash clusters are little pieces of, say, a lash strip. So you can see here, I have these false scaras, and they're all cut in tiny little individual sections. These are lash clusters. So so I also have lash ribbons, which are these right here, or if you can see it better without the packaging, these right here for you. So these are lash ribbons, and essentially what these are, are they are the lash strip before they're cut, so pre-cut. Um, and then you can cut and customize these however you want. These have been the ones that I have been using and I really love them. I bought a ton of these. Now this is the brand Lash Links and they offer ribbons and they also have pre-mapped clusters, I think. So they come like this and they're pre-mapped. And what I mean by pre-mapped is essentially they make different sized clusters and then they map it out to make the perfect like lash strip for you. Another thing that differentiates these from lash strips is that you put them underneath your lash versus on top of your lash like you do with the regular false lash band. And I really love that you put it underneath because you can virtually not feel them at all. They stay really well and it gives you a little bit more eyelid space. So for me personally, someone with smaller eyelids, I find that the lash strip doesn't end up closing off my eye. So I feel like my eyes look wider and brighter. And essentially, because you can't see that band on top, it looks like lash extensions, but you do it yourself and you don't have to commit to them and watch them all fall out one by one weekly, you know what I mean? So I love these. I used lash ribbons during my wedding. I bought a bunch of the Lash Links brand because I wanted to test out the different styles and everything and see how they wore before my wedding and I am obsessed with them. I ended up wearing them for another like three to four days after my wedding. Another thing about lash clusters or ribbons is that you can wear them consistently overnight, like for a couple of days, depending on how you apply them, what brands you use, and you know, like whatever your lashes tend to really like. So I wore mine for three or four days after. I've worn ribbons longer than that, but because my wedding lashes were a lot thicker, I ended up stacking a bunch of the different styles and sizes. So it just got to be like, I didn't want to deal with it anymore so I just removed them and I placed on a more natural looking set and yeah I just love them I don't think I'm gonna go back to strips honestly there's definitely definitely a learning curve I will say that so if you don't get it the first time don't be discouraged I started off with kiss falsqueras so let me show you guys the different ones that I have all right so like I said I started using lash clusters I think about a year ago so I started with the kiss falsquera set I got the whole set with the glue and the lashes and the tweezers and I really liked them. It definitely took a little while to get used to using them and I find that the falsqueras, so this is the second tube that I bought. I had bought like the one with the overnight little liner thing. So this comes with your bond on this side and then you seal it all in with this side and 
Also, you can buy packs and clusters um, from Ulta. I buy mine from Ulta, or I did when I was using these. So they separate it in length here, and you can see they give you a row of small, two mediums, and a large. And I find that I don't really use the smalls very often. This is a very old pack when I was like testing it out. I use mainly the mediums and the larges, and I, I felt like I was just going through them very quickly. I wasn't getting use of all of them, so I kind of like felt like it was a waste. So I started looking at lash ribbons or just lash clusters elsewhere. I tried out some lilac street ones that I still have and I do really like those. They have a bunch of different styles so you can choose between the styles and they all come in one length in a pack and then you would buy different packs of different lengths if you want to like do a specific look on your eyes. So say you want to do a cat eye so you'll go shorter to longer this way. Um, and I did like those and for my wedding, I opted for lash links because they had a lot more styles. I felt like I can customize it more and I could like cut them as short or as long as I wanted to. These are the ones that I have from lash links. I have all of them in a D curl. So a lot of ribbons and clusters will come in different sized curls. I opt for D curls because I find that with my smaller lids, the curlier they are, the more awake I look. And I have this style N2, and I have a bunch of different sizes. So I have this style N2 in 16 millimeters, 14 millimeters, and 12 millimeters. So the sizes are gonna be how long the actual lash is. So the length of the actual hair. Then I also purchased the style N3, and this is the one I use the most during my wedding. I got them in 10 millimeters, 14 millimeters, and 16 millimeters. And these two were the foundation of my wedding lashes, and then I used a little bit of the style N2. These tend to be more natural, but very long and voluminous, you can see here. So these look fairly natural if you look, versus the N2, which is gonna give you a lot more volume. So you can see here, this is the style N3, and then on the bottom, that's style N2. So you can see this is definitely more full and voluminous, while N3 is longer and more wispy. You can customize these so you can stack them or you can alternate between styles or sizes. And I really love that. I love that I can use the same lashes multiple times, which if you clean them well, then you can use them multiple times. So today I'm gonna to be using the style N3 in 14 and 16 and just show you guys a little cat eye demo type of thing. So I do use a little bit of a hodgepodge of products here. I wanted to use the lash links glue but whenever i went to go purchase it for my wedding they didn't have the glue in stock and i had already purchased a lot of the products from lilac street so from lilac street i use the applicator tweezers here i also use their lash conditioning primer so this is nice to just get all the dirt makeup and debris off of your lashes prior to putting the clusters on I use their Pro Lash Glue, and I also use the Crystal Clear Top Coat. So this is a sealant. So essentially these two are this. So the bond and the seal, the bond and the seal. I like this glue because I find that it makes the lashes stay a lot longer. And this Crystal Clear Top Coat is really nice because it takes all of the stickiness off of the glue. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you use something to seal your lashes to keep them from getting super sticky. You will need some scissors for this. If you're gonna do clusters like the Kiss ones, you don't necessarily have to cut them. But I will show you guys here at the best of my ability. Let me zoom you in. Here is a cluster here for you. So I'm gonna try to explain. So you can cut these essentially as small or large as you want, but you can kind of see here that you can make clusters. So right here, I'd probably cut one cluster and then right here I would cut one and right here I would cut one as well. I like to make sure that I get the excess band off of either side because that can tend to poke you if you don't get the extra um, band off of there. So I'm gonna cut a little thing right here and then I'm gonna cut the excess little guy right there. 
So you can see, this is hard to film. I'm so sorry if you can't tell what I'm doing, but I'll try to get some close-ups. So there is one cluster right there that I just cut off for you. So yeah, you can customize it however you want. You can also make an entire lash strip. I could just cut a little bit off and then the rest of it could be a strip if I really wanted to. I like the dimension of the different lengths. So I like to go in with different clusters. So I'm just gonna cut another little cluster here, probably right there. So you can see, I'm gonna cut a cluster right here. And I'm just gonna go down the line. I like to cut it when it's still on the tape right here before I take it off because it just makes it easier. I have more control and I'm just gonna cut all of these. Now, something else that I purchased that I really, really enjoy is this little lash pad from Lash Links. So it's double-sided, both sides are sticky. I still have the plastic on one side, but I love this because you can put your lashes on here and it makes it so much easier to apply. Whenever I was using the Kiss ones, I would just have it on my tweezers put the glue on and then stick these on. So I like to stick it like that so the band is revealed and then I put the glue on my lashes. I put a little bit on the band and then I'll stick them on. It makes for way easier application and then I don't have to like mess with the container of lashes because everything is already on this little pad and I've also mapped my lashes on here. So maybe I'll do like three sixteens on either eye and then I'll do the rest as 14s and that's it and then I'll have it mapped out so I can literally just go down the line pluck them off and like apply them to my lashes so I'm going to cut off the 14 millimeter ones now and I'm gonna do about the same sized clusters as well and you can kind of see if you look at the lashes you can kind of get a feel for where i guess not where you're meant to cut but where it's most natural to cut so you can see that looks like a cluster that looks like a cluster that looks like a cluster so on and so forth but again completely customizable you can do it however you want here's my lash pad it looks kind of funny but that's kind of what i'm going to map out so i have three sixteens and then three 14s. And we'll start with that and see how that goes. I find that my left eye is actually smaller than my right. I need less clusters on my left side, which is interesting. Let me see if I can get you guys even closer. I will take my lash conditioning primer and you can do this on a Q-tip. You can do it on your fingers, however you like to do it. I'm gonna use a Q-tip today. So I'm gonna put some of this on a Q-tip and I'm going to clean off my lashes for you. Let me tilt my head back. Hopefully that gives you guys a good angle. And I'm just gonna completely coat this. I did put makeup on, so you know, there might be some powder on here. I might have some concealer on my eyelashes. So it's important to start with clean, clean lashes. Oh, this is what my lashes look like, by the way, before I start. All right, so you wanna make sure that completely dries there. And what I like to do is I have this hand mirror from Fenty Beauty. So I like to either take it down this angle and look from underneath or I'll kind of like do it right in front of my face and apply that way. Either way, you're going to want to make sure that you can look down into a mirror and see because you want to see where the lashes meet your eyelid. So that upper tight line right there, you want to see that because what you're going to be doing is right where the root of your lash is, you're going to be sticking the lash. So before I get any glue on here, let me see if I can demonstrate that for you. So I'm just holding the very, very tip of this lash cluster with my tweezers, and I'm gonna lift this so you guys can see. Hopefully I can show you correctly. So you're gonna wanna make sure that the band of this lash is right at that tight line, so right here. You don't want it here like in the tight line, and you also don't want it too far away from the tight line. So you're going to want to place it right where your natural lash meets the tight line, but not on the tight line because that can cause like, you know, you can feel it more if it's on the tight line. So make sure it's right where the lashes start growing, right there. Some people I have seen lift up their eyelid and then apply it, you can do that. I like to look straight down into the mirror because I don't like touching my face and like stretching my face like that. And also I find once you put glue on here, 
You gotta let it dry for a couple of seconds. You can put glue on the base of your lash and then glue on this lash band. And then once they're both a little bit tacky, I like to kind of run it once and then stick it. So I like to run it like this to get a little bit of that stickiness onto the entirety of my lash before I place it. You don't have to do that, I like to do that. So something that KISS recommends that I don't like is that they say take this bond, right? So you have this tiny brush, take the bond and apply it like mascara. I don't like to do that because when I do that, the bond ends up sticking my individual lashes together. It makes like one or two giant clumps of lashes for these clusters to stick on. And I feel like that doesn't look as natural. It gets harder to work with the stickier and clumpier your lashes are. So for me, I like to place it on the base of my lash, brush a little with the cluster lash, and then stick it on there. So it'll make more sense when I actually do it. Another really important tip that I found that makes a huge difference, rubbing alcohol. This right here, not for your eyeball. Don't use that on your eye. So I like to put some rubbing alcohol on my paper towel and then use it for my tweezers. So I'll use it to pinch with my tweezers between sticking on the clusters because if you've ever encountered the clusters sticking to the lash, like you go and you apply it, perfect spot, good, you let go, and then the lash goes with it. So frustrating, that was the biggest learning curve for me, but it's because the tweezers take the glue with it. So using the rubbing alcohol and getting that glue off of there prevents that from happening. Way easier for application, way less frustrating as well. Just trust me on it. So I put a little bit here and I'm gonna start off to make sure if I have any excess glue that I'm getting it off there. Clean tweezies, tweezies. Okay, so I'm taking my lash glue here and I'm gonna show you guys this angle and then I'll see if I can get another angle that's even better than this. Oh. <laughs> Mine just broke. So this part that scrapes off the excess glue is now here versus on this right here. So it's very gunky, but it's fine. We're gonna work with it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so much glue. I was so confused for a second. Whatever, it still works. So I'm gonna scrape off all the excess. So I get the black one because my lashes are black. They also have a clear one, I think, but I don't know if it's the pro. Okay, so this is what that brush tip looks like it's the smallest little spiral going up the brush only place this on the base of your lashes there's no guarantee you're not going to get it on the rest of your lashes but try to concentrate the majority on the base of your lash and i only go like a third in and then i'll place as many lashes as i can and then go the rest of the way i'm going to place this only on the base of my lash right so right here and i wiggle it in there all right, and you can't really see it again because it's black, but I have some glue there. So I'm taking that same glue and I'm going to apply some to these lash bands. And you don't need a ton. This is just like extra security, you know? I put it directly on that lash band, a little bit in the front of the lash too, if you want, you don't have to. And then a couple seconds for it to get a little sticky. I feel it already like kind of sticking. So I'm gonna grab it by the very end of the lash to avoid getting glue on my tweezers. And then I'm gonna go in and place this. I'm gonna look down into my mirror here and then place this lash as close to the root as possible. And you'll know it'll stick when you kind of like brush that and it wants to stay there. Like when you brush it through the lash like I just did and it wants to stay. There's our first cluster right there. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, hi. <laughs> so I'm standing now. Hopefully you guys get a better like downward angle. I'm doing the same thing, grabbing that lash and I'm going to try to apply this to where you guys can see it. And you wanna get it as close to that other cluster as possible so there, do you see that? And I'm just pulling on my lid to show you guys. I don't normally pull on my lid like this, 
but as close to that waterline as possible. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply the other ones before this glue dries. Sometimes if the glue dries enough, you won't have to take the cluster and brush it through. You can just stick it on there. I'm gonna add more glue now because I've gone in done all of the glue portions and I'm gonna try to avoid the existing clusters but it's kind of hard it's okay if you get a little bit because we're going to do that crystal clear top coat just trying to overlap it a little All right, so my tweezers ended up sticking and taking the lash with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it. That is when this alcohol paper towel really comes in handy. All right. So I try to get as close to the tight line as possible without getting on the actual tight line. You guys can see that. Ooh, ooh, I'm sweating. <laughs> okay, so these are the lashes just placed now, if you can see. And then if you can see there, some of them are sticking right now, but we will fix that with the crystal coat, the sealant. But I tried to get as close to the tight line as possible without actually getting on the tight line because again, when you blink and stuff, you'll be able to feel it. So now I'm just gonna take my tweezers and I'm gonna pinch the lashes, the fake lashes with my natural ones to make sure that anything that has glue that can stick will stick. I'm just gonna go in and squeeze there. Sometimes your tweezers can get a little stuck, it's okay. Um, they will come off, and if the lash comes off, just replace it. It's fine. Kind of wiggle it there. All right, so that is what one set looks like. Again, I did 16s and then 14s. I did like three 16s and then three and a half 14s. So this inner cluster is half of the regular size that I was cutting. But yeah, so I did like kind of a little cat eye, which I love to do. I feel like it looks the best on me. We're gonna apply the crystal clear top coat and I like to apply it on the base and sometimes I even apply it on top of the lashes too. So essentially this is gonna take the stickiness off, the stickiness that you feel, and it'll also help seal those lashes in. So anything that's sticking, like my natural lashes, my bottom lashes, I'll put a little there and then I'll go in the bottom, wiggle some sealant. I don't find it necessary to brush through the entire lash, but you can if you want. It's a little stickier here. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut the rest of the lashes that I need for this eye, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply it for you guys. I'll just do like a fast forward over it since you kind of I'm sure you guys get the idea but in case you want to see it applied again I will do that for you now oh I also find that the D curl is great for me because my natural lashes are really straight and they point downwards so that extra curl really helps lift those lash ribbons for me so if you already have naturally curly lashes maybe you wouldn't need such an intense curl but try them out, see what you like. I really like them. All right guys, here's the full set. So I did the same thing on the left eye as I did on the right eye, same style and everything. So I love them, you can't even feel them. I'll show you guys the underside again so you can see that. So you can see how close it is to the tight line. This definitely takes practice and if you don't get it the first time, go ahead and remove that. It should come off pretty easily before you use that uh, crystal clear coat or that sealant or whatever you may be using you can take the lash off you can kind of comb through that glue with like a lash comb or something or just your tweezers and then reapply them and it should be good to go I find that they're so customizable easy to do and the more you do it the easier it gets for sure 
And I'll also show you guys the top of my lashes. So you can see here, you cannot even see a visible band. Like they look like lash extensions, don't they? I love them. Everyone always asks me if I get my lashes done when I wear these ribbons or clusters. And when I tell them that, no, I did them myself and they're like clusters that you put underneath, everyone's always so shook. They're like, what? <laughs> and if you want, you can curl them. Uh, make them even more fluffy. Again, you can stack them. I did this foundational like piece on my lashes on my wedding day. And then I added like N2s here and there just to make it even more thick. And my lashes day of looked amazing. I was obsessed with them and my makeup just turned out really, really nice. Alrighty guys, so those were the clusters. Um, pretty easy actually i won't say easy because there's definitely a learning curve i will say anyone that i've spoken to that have tried it the first time around they're like that was not easy christina that took me like an hour to do one eyeball and i'm like girl just stick with it keep trying and i promise you it's gonna be so worth it so i've definitely learned what works for me better like for instance not coating my entire lash with the glue just doing the base and then applying the lash with some glue on that strip has worked so much better for me i find that it's so much easier to work with to handle and it also looks more natural because you don't see your natural lashes like clump together on top of the clusters or the lash ribbons or whatever. I like that I can wear them for a long period of time or I can remove them. And for my remover, I use the Lilac Street remover and it's really nice because it has like very fine, spiky, almost plastic bristles that you can just comb through every lash. And I like to comb through and gently like rub and get those lash ribbons off. And then I'll go in again with the lash remover and then clean my lashes off. It is very sticky, I will say. It's not like your average strip lash glue, so any type of cluster or ribbon glue is gonna be way stickier. So keep that in mind. It does take maybe like one, maybe like two, three washes and two or three applications of the remover to really get it off of there. But as long as you use a good remover, you should be good to go. You shouldn't have any type of like shedding of your natural lashes if you're careful. I'll link all of the products that I use down below for you guys so you can see. I'm still testing stuff out. I really wanna try the Lash Links Lash Glue because they just came out with a new formula, I think. And it's a brush tip, so I feel like it'd be really nice to just like get in there. So that is everything that I do for mine. So again, some tips that I want you guys to take away. Make sure that you have that rubbing alcohol for your tweezers to avoid the really annoying like lash sticking to the tweezer thing. Get it as close to the root as possible. Clip off any excess band that you have so you don't feel it poking you or anything. And just practice. Just practice. Um, I love these. Again, they're super affordable if you think about it. If you can remove them carefully and clean them you can reuse them i would say out of one i've had three sets like not reusing any i've done three sets in total with like two different sizes and it's great so i get like six lashes like strips in total something like that <laughs> But yeah, that's everything for this video, guys. I hope that you find it helpful. If I miss anything, if you have any extra questions or you need help troubleshooting anything, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to help you guys out and let you know like my thoughts and if I've experienced it also. And oh, another thing is I was really worried whenever I tried these for the very first time that my lashes would look really droopy because my natural lashes are not curly. I thought that the clusters would just like droop down with it, but no, that has never been the case for me there's always a really nice beautiful curl i recommend clusters or ribbons to anybody and especially these brands that i talked about today i really love all of them i'll link everything down below for you i hope you found this video helpful if you did or at least enjoyed it please make sure to like comment and subscribe for more videos like this one and i'll see you guys in my next video bye